So it's like, so like, tell me this. Uh, what was it like up in there with as far as the uh, the DC cats? We always hear this story about the DC cats don't like us out here in Cali. What's what's the story on okay. that? I'm gonna tell you about the DC cats. I love them. I love riders. They zip damn fools. There's only one thing I don't like about them. They engage in rape and homosexuality, and they don't care. They can go be going on visits with the baddest woman in the world, and they come in back in there to a homosexual. Whoa. That's just enormously for them. They're predators. If you give them an inch, they're going to take five miles. They're all... I think the reason they clash with Crips so much because we're so much alike, not in the uh, rape and genre, but in the genre of you give a Crip an inch, he's going to take a mile. Right. He's going to take 10 miles, he's going to kick that door in. The D.C. dudes in the set, no shorts. The D.C. dudes are very feared by a lot of dudes, lesser factions. I used to go sit at their table, right? There's so many of them was in Terra, there's about 250 of them. And I go sit at their table, so they say, hey, Slim, where you from? And I like D.C. And they're like, what part of D.C.? I'll be like, Dangerous Cali, dangerous Compton, <laughs> dangerous Crippin, and I get up. Some of them would do just what you did, laugh. Other ones a mad dog be right. But ghetto no, honey bear no, soup and buck no, ghost no, goody 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 bay no, the uh, the, the 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 Lord Legend Singletary no, Titus the Fed Legend no. Yeah, they know. I'm I'm I was dropping them names. There was some DC boys that was there when I used to do that, and they just used to say. Probably crazier than a mug. And I'd get up and go over to the homies table. I was like, what was you doing over this in DC? I'm like, homie, we all from DC. And they're like, we ain't from DC. Like, we dangerous Crips. <laughs> you know, so the DC dudes, I, I didn't have a problem with none of them, you know. And because of the respect they developed for me in Terre Hutt, unfortunately, something happened in Fish Rest in Peace. One of our guys that got killed allegedly by DC in Victorville USP, which was our stronghold. Mm. And as a result, the DCs had to leave. <clears throat> And the vast majority of them came to Tear Hut. And we were, bear in mind, we were only 12 deep now in the Crip car. Yeah. And they could have molly whopped us. They were in the hundreds. But the DCs there who had respect for me said, nah, man, we got respect for Bri. Y'all not going to do that to them here. So we were able to maintain. We would have lost because of overwhelming numbers. Yeah, we wouldn't have went out like no punks. You know that. Yeah. But it was the point of we 12 deep, man. Were, were the DC cats out here in these, uh, like, uh, Long Park and all this, term terminal and were they out here deep too? Well, I didn't, I didn't hit Long Park, but I hit uh, USP Victorville, Victorville FC. When I was in USP Victorville, we had a meeting, the homies, and shout out to K-Head, you know, you know, glad you orchestrated and I supported it too, you know, and D-Lo from Bakersfield. And we had a meeting and it was a bunch of DCs in the hole, because whenever they came to USP Victorville, they put them in the hole, they wouldn't let them hit the main line. And so we had a meeting among ourselves as Crips, and you know, I was saying like, man, we got pyrus and we got bloods and we got so forth on this line, who've killed Crips in their time, and we know that they've killed Crips, and it's like, you know, hey, that's part of what happens. So we lost a homeboy, that's part of what happens. You know, so the homies, we all agreed to let the DCs out. So when they came back to USP Victorville, which was velvet, they came in droves. So you have to understand something in the feds. If you spit on the ground in DC, that's a federal crime. Mm, really? <clears throat> because it's the District of Columbia. If you slap a person, you come into the feds. Literally 99% of anything that's a crime, constituted as a crime, is a federal crime in D.C. So they always have a minimum of 6,000 young men, unfortunately, from D.C. in the feds. Mm. So you have places where you go to be 500 D.C.s, 300 D.C.s, 200 D.C.s. And the majority of them, I've only ran across a couple of soft ones. Only a couple. For, for the most part, them dudes go. You know, I heard. they really go. It's all a rumor about they don't like Cali cats. It's his own. People have told me stories about being in the federal prisons out there. They just said stories like, uh, remember when the homies from Dave would tell me, like the DC cats had to tell them, like, yeah, y'all Cali niggas can't even use the basketball court to be done. I think he was in some uh, Leavenworth, somewhere like that. Leavenworth? I was in Leavenworth. And it was like everybody was banded together. It was like, okay, all the Cali cats run together. The cats from Vegas uh, and all these other. Uh, Arizona, everybody's run with us because the D.C. cats. Where it is, I, what I always heard that they, they don't have state prisons in D.C. It's all no, federal. Lord, and they close them all down. Yeah. So, so that's why they so deep in the feds. Right. That and, and and okay, let me let me clean that up real quick. First off, California runs. California, the Crip car runs. Crips, Damus. 
California and parts near. Parts near is Alaska, Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, uh, Washington the state, um, Nevada, Iowa, Utah. That encompasses us from the West Coast. We rock together, you know. So that's how that goes. Now, with the DC cats, if a DC cat, the first thing I was told, if a DC cat, because I like to play basketball, if he calls you fuck boy, yeah. you better deal with him, Johnny on the spot. Not go tell the homie, not walk to the end of the basketball court, right there. That's a diss, fuck boy. The next thing you know, that's what he's gonna try to make you. Hell yeah. All right. And that's a code diss, fuck boy, when they call you a fuck boy. Now, if someone told the homie that y'all can't play basketball until we threw, then the homie should have dealt with him right there on the spot. Because on my watch, if it would have came to me from the homie that this DC dude told me we can't play basketball on the court until they're through, I would have dealt with the homie. But first, I would have, I would have been who? I would have went and dealt with him. And then I would have came back and dealt with the homie to get rid of him. See, to show you example, when Cats was in, 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 in USP, it was in Bloody Beaumont with me. That's where I pro from. It's called Bloody Beaumont. That's Texas? Yeah. Yeah. It was the homie from Oklahoma. It got robbed by a D.C. dude. So I said, well, yeah. Straight to the kitchen. Everyone in the kitchen watched me walk in because they knew when I came to the kitchen, I rarely came. That it's a problem because I had the crib car. I walked right to the D.C. section with the homie from Oklahoma. Like, who? Who? Dude named Gator. I'm like, come here, man. Let me holler at you, bro. I said, you a fool, but I'm a fool, too. I said, you jack my own boy? I didn't know he was in your car. I just thought he was from the Midwest. Okay, all this shit, I want it back. Then I told homie, now go fire on the other dude that was with him. So the homie went and dust him off. I told Gator, I got a thumper on me. You got a thumper on you. We both fools. Keep your ass squatted right here, and I'm going to keep my ass squatted. Mm -hmm. Afterwards, me and Lil G Mac, who's the Kingsman out of Vegas, they rock with us. Walked right to the building. The whole yard's looking. Gator brought the whole knapsack back of all the homie shit and gave it to me. I gave him a hug and told him, thank you, bro. Mm -hmm. See, DCs respect men. Yeah, that's what I heard. I heard. If you're solid, they respect you. Yeah. yeah. That's what I always heard. Too. And by then, I had a reputation that preceded me because I did my share of violent acts in the feds. Is the DC cats, are y'all GDs up there, too? And vice lords. No, no, the DC cats are, they run up under like four different factions. The DC blacks, then you have the regulars who don't participate in homosexuality, then you have the ones that participate in homosexuality, then you have Southeast, Southwest, things like that. You have 21st in Vietnam, different little things in their cities, you know, and because not all of them mess with boys. You know, so DCs, I, I, like I said, I like the DCs, and the reason they clash with Chris <clears> because when they encountered us, they encountered a, a worthy adversary who's just like them, mm. who didn't need 50 homies to go at you, who didn't walk around with security on them, because a lot of them cats in different structures walk around with security on them. Homies, we don't walk around with security on us. We push. Right. That's how we structure from California. We push. So, you know, when they ran across that, they was like, who are these dudes when the first influx of Crips start coming in? Hey, all them cats do run around with the razor blades up under their tongue and all that. That's a lot of New Yorkers. Yeah. I remember my boy Lowe, we were in the kitchen and he got into a fight and I was finna aid in the system because we were real tight, brother out of Brooklyn. And he went like this. <laughs> that quick and the dude, and I'm like, and the dude backed up and the dude was like 6'4", he was fighting. Yeah. And his whole face just went open right in front of me. Quick with it. So years later, we go years later now, no, actually 10 years later, my cell, he stole from me. And plus, I found out he was a snitch. He told on his mother, got his mother 30 years. So I'm in a new spot. So I told the homie, uh, Lil Denrock from Main Street, and Vic from uh, T-Zone, and uh, Yella from 590 East Coast, I'm going to get my cell today. I said, he stole from me. And I said, plus, he ain't no good. So he was like, all right. So I did what I called a New Yorker. That shit is crazy, man. I hit my man from here to here with the razors. 
And his whole face, he got 172 staples in his face. That what they call a buck 50? Yeah, I gave him a 172, though, <laughs> for stealing from you. You know, you're thief and you're rat. He said a 172. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, Dip Rock was like, Dip Rock Bay Street was like, damn. <laughs> Vic was like, you did it that quick? i like, yeah, it's done. I'm going to go replace some cars with the homies. <laughs> and they came and got me, of course. I stayed home for 10 months. Whoa. Yeah. And the difference in the feds, if they spell your name wrong, you could beat the write up. They call them shots in the state, they want 15s. But if they spell your name wrong, if they put the wrong date, they have to throw it out. Yeah, well, they, they, they like that out here, too. I know a lot of people that, uh, actually, I didn't beat a write up like that, man. It's like they just do anything wrong with the word, and it's pretty much the same as okay. what it feels. So, like, you, that's what we should look for, any kind of uh, error. And, then, yeah. and a lot of these CEOs, they be writing up these 115s. They don't be writing them up right. They be just doing so fast, just going with it. And it's like, okay, oh, he put the wrong name. He put the wrong number. This is off. This is wrong. That right. one little period, that one little dot, that one little word can overturn everything. It's the same with the Court of Appeals, too, though. You know, they right. work like that in the Court of Appeals, Yeah, too. they think they function, they, they, they're dealing with functional illiterates. Yeah. So they gave me four different write-ups with four different dates on them. Mm. And first they said I had a shiny prison weapon on one of them. Well, it's no camera. How can you say that? Then they said I just had a razor. Then they turned around and said I had a prison made weapon so which is it you never recovered it you know so i got by on that i ended up going to a spot called uh Pollock in louisiana they mm -hmm. kicked me out of they kicked me out of alabama i was in alabama when that happened and i uh, go to Pollock, and when i get to Pollock, <laughs> funny story i was just with him today t Lope from uh 570 ended i was just down there with them guys he had like a hundred dollars worth of food for me and he brought the homies for me to meet him and me and the homie Monk from on the park, we just pushed up. And so I go up to him, he's like, we got $100 worth of food for you right here. And he said, here, he gave me a bone crusher. For those that don't know what a bone crusher is, a prison-made weapon that's about yay big, about that wide. Yes, and when T gave that to me, I said, man, F that food. <laughs> and turned around walked back to my building. And he said, I told you, I told you I know the homie because me and T had been through the, through, through the mud together, you know, yeah. on some things in Victorville. And uh, so I laughed. I laughed at that today when he brought that up. You know, <laughs> yesterday, actually. And uh, so that's how it was. But they kicked me out of Pollock. Oh, okay. The, uh, <laughs> the, the staff did because they didn't want me there. Because when I got there, TNN was already doing their thing. But I started organizing more so the vice lords and the GDs to play as basketball on Sundays. In different cars to play the Crip car on Sundays. It showed a you know, sense of unity. Yeah. You know, then the homies, we start getting them jobs in certain areas. So staff was like, well, you know, you're, you're up out here, you got a half a lung and this, that, and another, and this is not a medical facility. All it needs is an inhaler, what are you talking about? Right. So they kicked me to bloody Beaumont. Goddamn, <clears throat> man, God. It's, it's cracking up there. It lives up to his name. Bloody Beaumont? Yes, sir. What would uh, what state prison out here would that be the equivalent of? Like a Pelican? San Quentin in 1984. Oh, back then. It, 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 the drop of a hat is on. So who was bringing all the drama up there? Well, you had a, a Mexican faction called Tonga Blast. Okay. They just like brothers. You had Texas guys dealing with their own. And you had ABs. And you had Serenes. There's about 150 Serenes there. So they did their things, but when you have such large cars, mostly a lot of it's centered on that car. Yeah. Except with the ABs, they gonna press every white boy they can press that look like he got money. Mm. So, you know, there's a lot of that going on. Uh, while I was there in the DCs, it was a trip, there was only like five DCs there and they were robbing everybody. <laughs> that shows you how vicious they are. <laughs> yeah, they got a serious name in the feds, man. I hear so much about the cats from DC, the DC yeah. brothers this, the DC brothers that. Yeah. You're the only person I know and just said, I love them cats. <laughs> but I can see why. I know you. Like, yeah, you run with them cats up there. Yeah, so I had a ball with them. You know, as a matter of fact, man, uh, when we was in USP Terry Hubble, there was a regular joint. I was the coach of the D.C. basketball team. Mm. Yeah, and that was crazy, you know. Here it is. I'm a crip, and I'm the coach of 18. And, and I used to tell them, look, man, what I say to you on this basketball court as a coach, I can't say to you off the court. Right. I said, but don't come to me with that bull, because I got a thumper on me too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I had to I had to coach with a weapon. <laughs> Cause I pull cats out, they give you that look like they gonna beat the brakes off me or something. <laughs> they had they had gems on up in there. Yes, sir, yes, sir. They had that uh 
their gyms that were equivalent to uh, the form. Mm. Yeah, it was nice. You know, so. It wasn't no country club, but it was nice. No, nah, so I get to Leavenworth from, well, I leave, I'm in Bloody Beaumont. I don't want to be there. So I tell Tank from uh, Folk Trade Hoover in uh, Oklahoma, which is very large out there. The Folk Trades are deep too. Yeah. Hoover's everywhere except for California. We know that's dark side now. Yeah. So anyway, uh, I tell Tank, this is how warped I was. I'm going to go to the yard and bump into a cat. And when he tell me why I don't say excuse me, I'm going to turn around and blast him and get on, homie. And Tang was like, man, you ain't got to do that. You ain't got to do that, homie. I was like, man, I don't want to be here, homie. I know I can leave if I just go blast somebody. For you don't know blast mean, it mean physically assault someone with a prison-made weapon. And that was my MO. If I didn't want to stay in the spot, I'd just go blast somebody and get on. The hell with it. Find the enemy or bump into somebody. So he told me, nah, man, <clears throat> there's a program that you can go to in Leavenworth. So I ended up signing up for the program. I went to Leavenworth. I got to Leavenworth, which was a whole different ball game. Mm. Every Thursday, this was the rules of Leavenworth. Take a shower, fix your food, get on the email, because we had computers, and get on the phone. The bus is coming in. And every Thursday, somebody got down. The whole time I was there. 